Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like this guy to my right from within the digital infrastructure space. And speaking of this guy to my right, um, this is Andrew Weber. Andrew is the founder and CEO of Digital Power Optimization, or DPO. Andrew, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am excited for you to be here because I already know uh, that we're going to talk about some things that I haven't gotten a chance to talk about yet uh, in the last uh, day and a half or so. But before we get into that, how's the show going for you? Oh, it's great. Excellent. A ton of great exhibitors, new technologies to look at and understand. Uh, it's, it's a great show. Yeah, the, the theme I'm feeling is that the ecosystem is just getting bigger. The more support we need, the more innovators are are, are, are uh, can, you know, kind of coming out of the woodwork at this point to, to support the industry. And that's what we're seeing at DCD Connect right now. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the, 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 the idea of change is constant in this space. And I think sure. it's ex accelerating to the Forget point that, about it. you know, people have to adapt and iterate even more quickly today to kind of keep up and make sure that this, you know, growth can actually happen. Right. Uh, and speaking of uh, DPO, what do you do? Yeah. So D Digital Power Optimization or DPO, we were founded about five years ago on the idea that there's actually a bunch of stranded power in this country. Mm -hmm. A lot of people at the data center conference might not realize that a lot of power producers actually have to sell power at negative prices because there's too much power available and not enough transmission. What? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, especially in places like the Midwest, the Plain States, there's a bunch of excess wind power and there's nowhere to put it. So digital power optimization thesis was that we should bring data center loads out to where the generation is already taking place uh -huh. instead of citing it just wherever it might be convenient for data centers. So again, the idea of optimizing a generation asset, optimizing the existing substations and the existing network that already exists and it is operating today yeah. uh, and tucking our data centers in and around that footprint to not cause so much disruption by building a huge, massive site all in one place. Okay, so I'm gonna go off script now. Sure. <laughs> we have the cats, the cats out of the bag. Um, you because and you mentioned the optimization. Yeah. That feels like the the theme or or uh, of your mission at DPO is like taking what already exists and making it a lot better. That's exactly right. Again, I mean, there's there's substations with excess capacity where you could go site. 20 megawatts, 30 megawatts, 75 megawatts of a new data center load, either firm or uh, flexible load, depending on what sort of backup systems you've got. And again, that's very different than the two or three or five gigawatt facilities that people are talking about today. But you can get faster deployment times by using stuff that's already built, it's already energized, it's already been constructed. Uh, and again, it's often cheaper because you don't have to go build all of that stuff yes. from scratch. Yeah. And so what about, this is, again, I, I, we could do this for an hour right now, but we, we don't have an hour. Fair uh, enough. But uh, next, yeah. So for, what about those, uh, the, those, those facilities, those, that infrastructure where the grid is already overloaded? Um, how do you how do you help there? Yeah, so that's a good question. And again, I think being thoughtful about where these data centers go and what size they're being built to uh, is an important consideration. And then, of course, you know, you see exhibitors at this facility, this, this conference talking about changes in cooling infrastructure, yep. to cooling technology, different uh, software that helps kind of analyze and figure out how best to use power in a given facility. Likely powered by AI. Also, exactly. <laughs> AI is making itself better at these at, at managing. Yeah, yeah, right. It's solving its own problems. That's right. Yeah. So I think, again, there's a lot of solutions that are coming forward. And again, I think the, the idea of being a firm load where you want, you know, five nines of uptime, I would like to see change a little bit where people start to realize that you can attach a big load to the grid if you voluntarily turn yourself off for one or three percent of the year and go switch to your backup systems, which is not something that's been done traditionally, but it's going to be more important. And you can get data centers cited more quickly if you're willing to not be a firm load during peak hours. It's so that's a fascinating concept. And again, this we didn't even talk about this before, but but um, there are lessons to be learned from kind of smart cities and how we have used some of those IoT devices to kind of determine where the power should be and where it doesn't need to be and, and how to optimize that. You guys have kind of like really that the, what you're doing is kind of that on steroids. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And again, I think, you know, the, the idea of different hours, different electrons have different prices and values at different times of the day in different locations. That sounds like a sci-fi novel. <laughs> it's, it's true. You know, and that's yeah. the way the grid works. And I guess a lot of people just haven't really thought about that. And so being a load when it's cheap 
and not being a load when it's really expensive. And again, that helps society at large by making sure that the, the grid networks don't get jammed up or cause brownouts or blackouts by just being more efficient and going away when the grid needs you to go away. All right, Andrew. So I um, uh, last year I brought I bought a, uh, a Volvo XC60 hybrid. Yep. Um, and and when I contacted my local utility, they said, power it at these times because it's cheaper yep. for us to provide you that power at that time. Uh, it sounds kind of like what you're talking about as well. It's very similar. Yeah. Again, I think there's the, there's the price of power day to day, and then there's the cost to interconnect in the first place. And if you say, okay. I'm going to put a 100 megawatt load on here and I need the grid to serve me uh -huh. all year long, no matter what. Well, certain resources have to be created and allocated to make sure that happens. If you say, I'm going to connect at 100 megawatts, but I'll go away for 1% to 3% of the year when things are really, really strained out there. I'll fire up my backups, my natural gas or whatever I've got. I'll you know draw my batteries. I'll go away so the grid doesn't need to supply me with power. Much quicker connection, much easier for that utility to connect you because it doesn't need to support you during the times that are most critical for it. So much like your car, the yeah. charging, or even your thermostat, right? The, the regulation of thermostats. That's, yeah, right. Again, use the power when it's cheap and available, when it's really expensive and, and society needs it elsewhere, you reduce that or you find your own power as your backup. So again, being more thoughtful about how to interact with the grid. Okay. And, and the one, the word we, you, you haven't and had every right to use the whole conversation is sustainability because right. this feels like a sustainability play too. That's right. And again, I think anyone would say that if you've got something that's already built and you can go make use of it, it's that yeah. whole reduce, reuse, recycle sort of concept. I where mean, yes, right, 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 exactly. It's already there. And not to mention some of the generation is actually being curtailed. That's that's what really blows my mind is you've, you've permitted a solar asset or a wind asset. You've, you've financed it. You've constructed it. But then you're not operating at a max capacity. Why? Because you have nowhere for the power to go. That's yeah. a travesty of its own right, which yeah. is you've got these resources that are capable of doing more but we don't let them because our systems aren't designed for it. Yeah. So bringing a load out there solves kind of two problems with one. Uh, Allows you to clean the plate, right? That's right. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You Great bet. conversation. You bet. Absolutely. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you real soon.